Hey, what's up, rock stars? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog. So let's get to it. Love, All right, y'all, the one bang is back. <laughs> Here to get on some of y'all nerves. First story up, uh, divorces. Child, that seems to be on everybody's uh, mind these days. Either you getting a divorce, you got a divorce, y'all settling on child support, uh, spousal support. I mean, it's a whole lot going on. Let's start with the biggest story that dropped last week. Of course, right after I did Top of the Blogs, because that's how it always is. As soon as I post it, then here comes some salacious gossip uh, down the pike. Um, and of course, we always miss it on last week. So this dropped literally right after I put up top of the blogs. I feel like on Saturday or maybe even Friday morning, it was announced that Jeezy had filed for divorce. That's right, you guys. Young Jeezy mama named him J. Wayne Jenkins. All right, J. Wayne Jenkins. Okay, which uh, the studio is lovingly named after. You guys know that this is Young Jeezy, the, uh, the studio. Uh, because it's the snowman. He's all white. But this time, yeah, sad story. Uh, young Jeezy and Jeannie Mai, or Jeannie May, however you say her name. Y'all know I fuck up names uh, <laughs> on the regular. These two have been married since March of 2021. Actually, everybody is calling this the pandemic marriage because we found out about the relationship. It seems like right around the time that we was all on lockdown, maybe right before that. And then we saw that they were sharing their lockdown experience together, okay? Um, and uh, we would see him and her and the mother in videos and all. And, and it seemed that the mother loved Jeezy um, and uh, Jeannie seemed to love Jeezy. And actually Jeezy seemed to love Jeannie. So it looked like it was a match made in heaven. They had a little baby, a little baby girl um, last year. That little girl's name is Monaco My Jenkins. They had her in January of 2022. So she's just a little over a year old now. And um, I think we were all rooting for them. You know, I didn't even really know Jeannie too much. I mean, I knew that she was on the real. Um, and but other than that, I you know, never really knew too much about her, didn't follow her, didn't follow Jeezy or anything. So their relationship came out of the blue, and then this damn divorce came out of the blue. Okay. And everybody had a lot to say on social media saying that um what I saw the most though was um women in particular rejoicing over the fact that they were breaking up because Jeannie Mai had said, um, amongst other things that were controversial or problematic. Um, the most memorable though is her saying that she prefers her m meat white. It keeps her lean and mean. She said that dark meat is for the side. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> and she said that was the reason why she had married a white person. That's when she was married to the guy, Freddie, remember? But then they got a divorce and um, then she moved on to Jeezy and seemed like she changed all of her values. I mean, she at first didn't want kids and, you know, it was all this. And then when she got with Jeezy and I guess she felt safer um, and felt like she was in a place where she could actually have a baby and be a mother to a child um, and not be afraid of how she was raised, you know, reflecting on the new child you know, it just looked like these two was going to be happy, okay? But, uh, yeah, now that we didn't came through the fog of pandemic, um, and maybe some of us are seeing clearly now. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jay Wayne said that, yeah, he can't hang no more. And so we were wondering, like, what exactly was the problem? I saw yesterday on social media, Funky Dineva, who was on uh, Fox Soul, you know, TGIF, the show that they have. Um, and he was saying that he had the tea on why they had broken up. Apparently he had spoken with somebody that was pretty close to their camp. And um, it turned out that it was nothing salacious. It was nothing um, about cheating or anything like that. It was really literally um, on um, like trying to agree on how you were going to raise your household. Okay. Um, this is a conversation. These two are actually a good example of how people that are about to get married really need to go to counseling. 
okay? You really need to go to counseling. Sometimes it might not even be particular issues that you have right now, but counseling can help you root out these type of issues that they are now seeing themselves facing with. Funky Dineva said that the main problems were the distance. Um, they both are entertainers. They both have demanding careers, so they are both gone. We know that Jeezy recently came out with a book, so I know he is out promoting his book. Um, but he's also a rapper, so he probably performs, you know, tours a lot of the time. Um, and then we know Jeannie is a host. I guess she's on a show now. I see her every now and then with Mario Lopez. You know, people were trying to say that her and Mario Lopez was messing around. I don't know what that show is, what channel it is. I had no idea that that was going on. I don't know if that's an every week thing, every day, whatever. But she also works. Um, and so that was part of the strain. The other part is that Jeannie likes to live her life um, um, out loud and in public, which means that she likes to be on social media a lot and she posts a lot of her private life. Um, they're saying that Jeezy is a private person and does not like to um, showcase his private life on social media. I guess it was cute at first when they were first starting to date, but now we on real, real life. Like we together now, you know, honeymoon stage is over, you know, it's only supposed to be that first year or whatever. We getting down to business now and, <coughs> excuse me. And now my real life, I don't want it to be out there just all the time. So like if they have a private party, some friends over, Jeannie is pulling out the phone, putting it on social media, and that's just not what Jeezy does. Also, apparently the mother has moved in with them and the brother. Um, and well, I mean, you already know, we, we ain't really trying to live with the mother-in-law. And I mean, it's not like the mother is sickly or anything like that. And um, the mother has had some problematic ways in the past too, you know? So I don't know if maybe the mother-in-law has rubbed Jeezy some, you know, the wrong way, not necessarily even on purpose. It could be some cultural differences there, you guys. I mean, this is a very big difference. She's Vietnamese, Jeezy is black. Not saying that Vietnamese and black can't get together and be together, but you know, there are definitely going to be some cultural things that you have to overcome. Okay. Um, so that also, I don't know if the family moving in, that might be, have some cultural um, um, attachments to it. I know that some cultures are more prone or open to having like all of the family in the house, you know, it just sort of depends. Not saying that that's bad. And then other things like she likes to walk the kid to school, Funky said, and and, and, and Jeezy says it's, that's a security issue, you know. She feels like she wants to live her life as guess maybe as normal as she can. And Jeezy is trying to remind her that they are celebrities. I don't even have to say that Jeezy, you know, was um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, part of them streets for a long time. He may have some enemies out there. You know, you just can never be too safe. You know, this is his wife and his child. He wants to make sure. So it's those type of issues that when you sit down with a counselor, you guys can either overcome before you start the family and get there or is something that neither one of you are willing to bend on and you'll realize that maybe this is not, this union is not going to work. And those things are fixable. But the thing is the person has to be willing to bend. Somebody has to be willing to bend. I kind of understand um, at least where the security part comes in, where GZ is coming from. You know, you just have to be a little bit. And, and also social social media, you guys know that I am not a big social media person which is like I, everybody's like why you do this job is that's not your thing like you know i just kind of got wrangled into all of the rest of this because when i was just doing youtube child it wasn't all this other shit it was just youtube now it's youtube and twitter or sorry x and threads and TikTok and you know people still on snapchat apparently and instagram and youtube and people still doing tumblr out there and you know they got all these different spaces and i guess my space is still out there. i mean it's so much shit now you know but 
I can totally understand trying to be a little bit more private in a social media world. So I can understand these things are not things that they can't get past, but again, it just depends on if everybody is going to be on the same page. Um, which is like actually kind of heartbreak. And I know a lot of people was happy to see that they are breaking up. The only thing about social media when it comes to relationships is social media is very, very unforgiving. Sometimes you can say things that, you know, maybe wasn't that in retrospect, you thought you was being cute or clever or funny, and then it's not, but it's already out there forever and ever and ever. And when that might not even have been your real, for real feelings, you just was trying to be cute at the time. You know, that could have been what Jeannie was doing when she said what she said. I know a lot of black people will be like, nah, Roxanne, we ain't giving a bitch a pass on that one. Okay. And I totally understand, but I do know being, doing what I do is that it's hard to take shit back <laughs> when you put it out there, you know? So, um, not saying, so I guess what I'm saying is maybe in retrospect, Jeannie would not have said what she said, okay? Um, and I'm sure that she regrets what she said. That's something that has made it be hard for a lot of people to feel sorry for her. But I do not like to see marriages break up, um, especially ones like this where the issues is not impossible to un overcome, you know? I I'd like to see them make it back together. Um, maybe they can, but I don't know. Jeezy filed his shit. We ain't heard nothing else from him or her, really. I don't even know if she knew. I was watching Layla's, um, hey, Layla. I was watching Layla's video the, um, yesterday, and she was like, that shit looked like it came out the blue on the old Jeannie, because she was just promoting his book and saying, you know, my love, and we're so proud of you and all of this. So it feels like, dang, y'all just couldn't work that shit out, you know, so anyway <clears throat> that is what's going on with them there um yeah kind of bummed to see them break up but y'all listen rich people problems they both gonna be fine either way it go okay if they don't keep it together or if they get back together one or the other it, it, it's no hair off my back no skin off my back one way or the other you guys but i would like to see them fix that if they can so that's one of the 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 divorces that is coming down the pike um ariana grande okay this is for y'all that asked because honey i don't uh, ariana is so off my radar i didn't even know the girl was married <laughs> i was like oh she get a divorce i was like ain't that child been married before like what the fuck is going on is ariana just over there just getting married on on her free time because the child is only 30 years old. It's like, how you divorced twice already, you know? But that's what they say. So she was um, <clears throat> married to a Dalton Gomez. He's a real estate agent. And um, actually, they said that they've been separated since July, okay? And um, they have been quietly working on the terms of the divorce. So they're saying that this is an amicable divorce, which is what they always say. Um, basically, Ariana, they say, is just willing to just pay him whatever the fuck she owe him and get out of her face. OK, they did have a prenup, apparently. But um, so they're just working out the numbers or whatever she's gonna pay and then it's gonna be that's gonna be that but you know the the same uh statement that they usually put out you know they best friends and he's her number one fan and you know but they just couldn't stay married but they gonna be best friends y'all 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 better believe that okay so ariana grande okay and no uh dalton that that's the second divorce then, this is a follow-up story from last week, Tayana Taylor and Iman Shupert. Now, last week, I told you guys about uh, Iman, apparently, the girl that posted that video with him wearing his chain, um, and how weird that was, even though the girl was saying that there was nothing going on with them, was well, shortly after that, Tayana Taylor actually came out and said, hey, ah, 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 not too much on my bestie, okay? Y'all leave my homeboy alone. All right, that's her That's her best friend. That's also her, her co-parent. All right, they got two beautiful girls together, but they've been separated for some time now. And I was like, oh, 
I didn't realize that, but I'm not really surprised because, you know, we've been, uh, there's been shit with Iman recently. Um, I told you guys last week that I thought it would be very hard for Tayana to, you know, for them to not be a unit. Um, but hey, Tayana was like, bitch, a bitch is strong and I don't need a nigga for nothing. <laughs> I can get a divorce. I can, but they ain't talking about divorce. It's just a separation. And the way that she was speaking, it was sounding like maybe they just needed some space and they gonna make it back to each other. This is, this is another family that I would love to see stay together. You know, they got beautiful kids together. Um, and, and, and I'm sure, you know, it's difficult. You've been married to a basketball star. He's retired now. You know, everybody trying to get, you know, they footing on this new, uh, this new place in his life. Yeah, those two um are separated now I'm not talking divorce yet but you know we'll see what happens there i mean he's gonna be a pretty hot ticket okay and actually tayana too tayana is gonna be a hot ticket too they're saying that these two haven't really been seeing eye to eye ever since whatever that incident was with chris brown and usher and her at the skate party that they had for chris brown's birthday party so whatever happened at that thing that everybody has been fucking mums the word about, okay? Ever since then, Tayana and Iman, they say, haven't really been seen together, haven't been around, haven't been posting each other or anything. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it. It could be completely just nothing to do with it, but I thought I'd throw that out there because that's what them screets are saying. Um, so yeah, that's another, um, separation, possible divorce coming down the way. Um, another divorce that's on its way down is, um, Danny Masterson's wife, Bijou Phillips Masterson. Okay. Now remember last week I told y'all about Danny Masterson, put that ass in jail 30 years. Okay. Won't be eligible for parole until 25 and a half years. Okay. And considering he is 40 what is he, 47? I think he's 47 years old. So y'all, get let me, let me get my calculator because, I mean, I could do that in my head, but it's so much more fun on the calculator, right? Okay, so if we say 27, <clears throat> 27 time, nope, 27, nope, 47 plus 25.5, Mm -mm. 47 times, nope, <laughs> 47 plus 25.5 equals 72.5. He'll be 72 and a half years old, 72 and a half years old before he is eligible for parole, okay? And um, I know like you know that um, uh, Bijou, as much as she may love her husband, because they said that she's been quite uh, supportive the whole time that they were in court, you know, even cried when they read the verdict. She might have just been crying about just how this whole story is just sad and how uh, love has been lost and that, you know, her man that she's put so much trust and faith in is out there raping women, um, uh, three of them, you know, uh, that's something that a wife don't really want to hear about their husband, you know, so... She she might just be just sad, like this whole thing is just fucked up. And that might be why she was crying, you know. But yet and still, the man gone to jail a week, a little bit over a week later, uh, Bijou put the papers in. Irreconcilable differences, wants full custody of the child, also wants spousal support. I believe she will get both, okay? And she wants her name to go back to just Bijou Phillips, drop that Masterson shit. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's another uh, divorce coming on down the way um then we got hugh jackman y'all didn't know i was about to throw uh throw the wolverine up in this mug did you that's right y'all hugh Jack jackman and his wife um uh uh De De deborah lee furness i think it's deborah lee furness um Hugh Jackman is 54. His wife is 67. I didn't realize that there was a, um, a, a age difference in the two of them. I know that Hugh Jackman just all of a sudden looked like an old man. I was just like, I mean, he's still a good looking man. 
but I didn't realize that he was only 54. I was like, this motherfucker look like he, you know, he looked like he could have been in his late 50s, early 60s himself. You know, I don't know. If, I don't know if uh, old DeBar been putting them through some shit. Y'all, them Debras, they definitely can put you through some shit. <laughs> Y'all know one of my best friends is Debra. Child. Bless her heart. But they got a whole lot with them, child. So, <clears throat> no, I'm just kidding. Y'all know. Debra, I know you watching. You know, Rocky Lee. Anyway, um, they get a divorce after almost 30 years of marriage, you guys. This is kind of one of them situations where the kids finally grew up. They probably been just waiting until they their youngest kid got to be 18 years old off to college and then was just like, what the fuck is we together for? Like, we don't even really like each other like that, like that. So they got two kids that they adopted, actually. Oscar, 23, and Ava, 18. Now, 18, Ava was the, was the signal. <laughs> it was like, baby, at that graduation, they probably both was just like, okay, we fixing the gist. All right, so... I'm just assuming, I don't know if Ava is still in the house or not, but 18 years old usually means that the child is off to college and now these two can go on with their life. They have provided a stable home environment for their two kids as they grew up. So now uh, Hugh and uh, Deborah said that, that that's that on that. So 30 years, that's that. They actually said that Hugh is has been the one that's been having a hard time with this. It's getting hot in here. I'm about to turn this hair on. They said that his family and his friends have been the ones that have to carry him through. So I'm not sure if maybe Deborah was just like, hey, baby, I love you and all, but I can't do this shit no more. Okay. So yeah, that's another. That's another divorce coming. Let me turn this air on. Give me a second. <clears throat> It's hot. Oh my God, it's hot. It's not even that hot outside, but it's just hot in this car. I'm gonna roll my windows up. Sweating my little bit of makeup off. So yeah, that. so what was that? That was, um. so that was Jeezy and Jeannie. That was uh, Ariana and Dalton. That was um, Tayana and Iman. That was uh, Danny and Bijou, that was Hugh and uh, Deborah. Um, and then we are on to Kevin Costner, okay? Yeah, that's right, Kevin Costner and his wife, Christine Baumgartner. They have settled their divorce, okay? They actually had, I think the spousal part of the divorce was already figured out because they had a prenup. And I think he had to pay her like just a certain amount payout altogether. What they was going back and forth was haggling over was child support. They have three children together, um, 16, 14, two boys, 16 and 14, and then a 12 year old daughter. Okay. And apparently she was, and she originally was asking for some astronomical, like $250,000, somewhere around that a month for them, okay? Um, and that's when Kevin Costner was like, that bitch, I know you fucking lying. Because <laughs> what the fuck? She the reason, I don't care what they say, she the reason why Yellowstone is no longer a show. I mean, you can watch the, the, the reruns. They just started season one again on, on uh, CBS. They just started showing it again. Is it CBS or is it Peacock? Whatever the show is, I mean, channel is, they started showing it again, okay? So you can catch up, excellent show. But yeah, I think that he was just like, bitch, it's gonna be the coldest fucking day in hell before I go back to work if I got to pay you two hundred and fifty fucking thousand dollars. So then they dropped it down to apparently a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars a month. Okay, and um, I guess that's more reasonable, child. Listen, we ain't got that kind of money, so we don't, you know, we don't even equate that. We, the fuck, a hundred and seventy five thousand is still a lot. Um, when it was all said and done, the judge says, uh, no, you can pay $63,000 a year, I'm sorry, a month for them kids. Um, and also he has to pay their tuition for school and he has to pay their health insurance. I, I believe that those are going to be the highest expenses that the woman would come up with anyway. So 
if she don't have to fuck with tuition because that tuition for them kids really is you know that that would have taken up her sixty three thousand dollars probably for the month you know so um she's still coming out like a fat cat if you ask me you know she probably not happy with them numbers but i mean they settled so i guess she was just like fuck it give me the 63 and let that be that but yeah so that's another one and then right before i started to do this video i saw on social media that anthony anderson who got a divorce remember they filed for a divorce they was getting a divorce and they got back together and then they broke back up and sis was like i can't do it and i don't blame her because i can't stand anthony <laughs> he's one of them people that i don't like y'all he is just so um uppity and so you know i I already told you guys, and when I started my career as a thespian, I was just like, did he just really say that in the interview? Yeah, Anthony Anderson and his name dropping sales. You know, I was playing at a, 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 a charity golf tournament with Shaq and Michael Jordan. You know, we sit down and we have cigars every now and then, you know. Not saying, I'm not hating on the fact that he's made it and that he's rubbing elbows with these people. It's just, he always figures out a way to work it into the conversation whenever he's talking. You guys, mark my words. Next time you see him on the interview, just remember what I said. Okay, but anyway, <clears throat> so him and Alvina, they get in a divorce and they finally settled on her monthly shit, okay? she's He's been ordered to pay her twenty thousand dollars a month i don't know if they have young kids i believe they do have children together i don't know how old the children are they didn't mention anything so the kids probably are old now but um or you know grown i should say but uh yeah that's what she gets twenty thousand a month and then if his income goes over two million dollars for that year then she gets twenty percent of whatever the income raise is and all of that so yeah so all them people I just told y'all about, child, I mean, that, that'll give you no faith in the union of, of uh, in the sanctity of marriage, does it? But I promise you guys that marriage is still a good thing. It's just work. And people used to always get on me and be like, Roxanne, you make marriage sound so horrible and all that. And I was just like, I've never said that it was horrible. It can be, okay? But it's not, nothing is that all the time, right? So, yeah, shit sometimes can be fucked up. Sometimes things can be great. Like, right now, I'm in that real great space. You know, I really like Mr. Uh, you know, a lot. But trust me, there are times when me and Mr. don't see eye to eye and shit be, you know, it don't be all that perfect. But you have to remember, I mean, it ain't never perfect, okay? But what I'm saying is you have to remember the commitment when the shit is real fucked up because that's the only thing that you really have left to cling to is the commitment because at the time it's just sort of like okay are we both willing to try to work this out you know so yeah marriage can be very difficult but it's not always difficult there are highs and lows there are ebbs and flows you know and i just like to be truthful to everybody about that because even when me and mr first got married we did not know what we was really getting into you don't know it because you don't know that you've never done it you know if it's your first marriage you don't know you ain't been with somebody and having to really really consider the other person so you know it is definitely the biggest it is the most rewarding and the most frustrating and the most great and the most horrible and the most it's the most everything that i have ever done in my life <laughs> okay you you can put so many adjectives in there depending on the time and the day all right what what is going on at that time but it's worth it you guys and i'm telling you as long as you know when the times come when it might be like oh shit you know it's time to you know hunker down you know batting them hatches or something then you know just know that eventually it's gonna go back up okay but then know it it might go back down again it's just that that's just part of the ride y'all anyway i'm i don't like to be preachy and i don't like to con you know like, because i just want you guys to understand that even though i've told you all about all those divorces that makes me sad you guys but <clears throat> maybe some of them will work it out some other ones i think is 
a wrap on that. Y'all let me know what you think about all that though. Next story. We don't dress softly, uh, but not flossy, uh, the streets didn't taught me, uh, but we're too bossy. Next story up, you guys, is actually a pretty sad story. Irish Grinstead from the um, R&B girl group 702. Um, she died. And that was another big story that came out right after I did Top of the Blogs last week. So shocked. I was so shocked. I mean, you know, you never expect anybody's death. So, I mean, those stories are always shocking. But, you know, when they be so kind of like a random, like come out the blue kind of thing with Irish, I wouldn't even have known who Irish was if it wasn't for the show, The Encore, that her and her sister, Lamisha, remember they were on that show with the twins and uh, Pam from Total and um, Nivea and all them. Remember that, that show that they were on, which was a hit, quite entertaining. Um, but we had no idea that she had been sick. Now, in retrospect, now that I go back and kind of look, because I actually went back and watched one of the episodes, I can probably see that maybe she was she had, was fighting some sort of illness. Maybe it hadn't gotten so uh, serious yet, but then when you look at those when you looked at her then she did kind of have like a little bit of a sickly look um but apparently at the end of last year her and her her and her group members you know they still tour and they still sing and do different things um but they had mila and lamisha they had announced that irish was facing some serious health issues and that she wasn't going to be singing with the group right now she was going to be taking a break um, I didn't even know that had happened. So for this news to come down that she had died, her, her sister actually had posted it. She was part of a twin. Her twin had died earlier. I actually should have looked up how the twin died. The, the twin died some years ago. Um, and I don't know what the twin died from, but Irish may have had the same condition of whatever the, tw the, the twin who had died. She may have also had the same condition and she succumbed to it too but that's just my assumption i don't know that i don't know for a fact I'm, I'm not sure if she you know died that way i'm not sure if she had cancer or what but yeah just a really really sad story and actually made me feel bad because i was just like god we was really just like clowning them but we weren't really talking too bad about irish because even though irish and lamisha's voices were not you know where everybody else's voices were on the show you know, they were the most likable ones. You know, we loved Irish and Lamisha. Um, and Irish especially because she was just sort of like, you know, fuck these bitches, you know. But yeah, that 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 was very surprising. Young, 43 years old. She has a son. And um, uh, yeah, very, very, very sad. So <clears throat> that is the third black girl group. I was going to say from Atlanta, but 702 is not from Atlanta. But the third black girl group that they have lost a member because remember black lost their member. Remember, she got hit by the car out here in Atlanta. And then, um, of course, TLC left eye. We know um, she had died in a car accident. And now we have um, Irish from 702 um, who has also died. So very sad prayers up for the family um lamisha and all the rest of them also for mila for the for the group you know they are their own family as well and they've lost a family member so yeah prayers up for them like i said irish rest in peace and this is just a real quick quick this could have really been a quickie at the end, but I'm just gonna put that at the end of this video, you guys. What is the what is the gossip about Tim's being pregnant by Future? I said, girl, no, not Future, not Future. Yes, Tim's five in the morning. Him in the cannelloni, be nearly there. Something lost in me. I'm in the morning. Me nailing on Another word. Hilda, Hilda, Mila, 
하는 내 손래 마마 하는 내 손래 랄라 하는 나나 놀래 내 빈바이 실린 인어 마미나 나나 나나 I'm sorry you guys next time I'll get the words up so I can sing it for you but yes that Tim's child they saying that she pregnant by future now she I did see a video of her at fashion week and it does look like she's pregnant okay um but you couldn't really tell but she had on like a a, um, a, a body suit and so you could kind of see but she also had a very big fur jacket on over it so but it did look like she did have a bit of a of a belly there but um uh, future tim's girl i know i know i know you ain't missed all of the last four years that we've been fucking with future child maybe even longer than that how old is that child that sierra how old is sierra little boy okay however old he is we've been fucking with future we've been fucking with future about a year or two before that so nigga that got that got to be about eight years then how you done missed all that child how you missed all of the warning signals of fucking future now i know he cute and he look like he got good d-i-c-k because rapper d-i-c-k for whatever honey future they say that you I'm just gonna say, future get these women and then they lose their mind. Girl, you could have had sex with them, but you ain't needed to get pregnant. So I, I just, I'm, I'm gonna refuse to believe that. I, the, the, the rumor has not been substantiated. We don't know where it came from. Maybe future was just something funny to attach to her. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I really would hope that this girl got more sense than to get pregnant by future child. Because, girl, I just hope you know that it's fitting to be on you, okay? We saw how Sierra, when she was on that interview, and somebody asked her about, you know, co-parenting with Future, and all she could do was laugh. <laughs> oh, hey. <coughs> I mean, what else you want? What else you want, babe? I let that be the warning to you, okay? You did have it. If the Future is your baby daddy, I mean, fool me once. Okay. Next story. Section eight, and I knew I was at since the second grade. Man, I swear my time is coming, cause I'm never late. Came from broken homes and broken dreams again.